And on to a big story making headlines nationwide this morning. A New York grand jury has voted to indict former President Donald Trump. Yeah, that indictment comes in the case involving adult film star Stormy Daniels, where he's been accused of paying her hush money, which itself would not be a crime, but uh, the accusations appear to center around how that hush money was sort of hidden from public view. Now, the charges that the former president is facing have not been released yet, but there are talks that the arrest could happen as early as next week. Now for more details on what is expected in Trump's indictment journey, we're speaking now with criminal justice expert Bobby McDonald. He was formerly a supervisory Secret Service agent. Bobby, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Kim and Erica, good morning to you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First off, please give us your take on the jury's indictment of former President Trump. Well, you know, if we've been following the news the last couple of weeks, I don't think we should be overly surprised that it's happened. I know it was kind of seesawing back and forth, but obviously just before the close of business yesterday, they decided to go forward with the indictment. Um, a lot of unknowns here, as you said earlier, we won't know what's actually in that indictment until after the arraignment process when that may be opened, uh, may be kept sealed. That all depends on the court. Um, we've got a lot to unpack here as we move forward, especially with the campaign and the logistics of how this arraignment's going to take next uh, take place next week. So again, a lot to uh, unpack here as we move forward into next week. Uh, let's talk about those logistics because that's certainly an area of strength for you having spent 20 years with the Secret Service. Mr. Trump, being a former president, has Secret Service protection for life. They will, uh, my understanding is, accompany him through this process over the next week. What do you think that is going to look like? Uh, again, no playbook on this. Uh, they're going to be playing it by ear. There are, I'm sure, very intense negotiations going on right now, as well as liaison meetings with not only the prosecutor's office, the Department of Corrections in New York, the New York City Police Department, and the local field office of the Secret Service, which supplements the uh, uh, former president's detail. Uh, he will. Uh, we've never had a protectee of the Secret Service indicted or arrested before, so mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we're going to have to work out a lot of the logistical kinks here. Um, they're going to want to make sure that the safety uh, of the president is ma former president, excuse me, is maintained at all times. But also, we are sworn officers to uphold the Constitution, so we also have to make sure that the legal and arrest process goes through fairly for both the prosecutor's office and for the former president. Well, as you mentioned, certainly uncharted waters here. Uh, let us talk about what you think this is going to do with the upcoming 2024 presidential election. How do you think this will affect that? The campaign. Uh, not an attorney, but it's my understanding that uh, this does not preclude the president from continuing his campaign for his return to the White House. I think it's probably something that will be talked about uh, every day uh, until there's a resolution. You know, he's also got the other pending investigations that are going on uh, across the country down in Georgia and some others in New York. Um, just going to have to wait and see. Uh, I don't know that we, uh, like I said, I don't know that we have uh, uh, a, a good idea of how this is going to go. I think it's going to go as it happens, and we'll figure it out as we move along. Uh, you had mentioned before, Secret Service agents uh, uh, are sworn to uphold the Constitution, and my understanding is there's a provision in the Constitution that talks about extradition, or when somebody has been charged with a crime who's in one state, bringing them back to the state where they're being charged. I'm curious, what do you think would happen, not that it's likely or that anybody's indicating this, but if the president uh, tries to stay in Florida and refuses to come back to New York, what kind of position would that put Secret Service agents in? Uh, I think my first thought is I'm glad I'm retired and wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, I don't know the answer to that, to be very honest with you. Yeah. I think, again, that based upon the situation, I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. But if that was to happen, uh, I think that there obviously would be, again, some intense meetings, some intense negotiations. The Secret Service is very good at what it does, and the Secret Service is very good at liaising with other agencies that it partners with in the community. So that's one of their fortes, is to figure out uh, how to uh, solve problems that come across their desk. So I'm confident that there would be a resolution worked out, and we really wouldn't have to go to an area that we really don't want to mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope so, right? Yes, yeah, purely a theoretical question at this point. And as you, as you pointed out, Mr. McDonald, will probably stay a theoretical question, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We certainly do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good being with you.